A friend of mine bought these. Uh, this is the Robo Robot Kit and Robo Lab, and he uh, bought them and loaned them to me to evaluate them, look at them for him. And as you can see, there's two different things. One of them is this controller has different buttons and sliders and whatever on it. And then there's the robot, and it comes with uh, various controllers that are magnetically uh, attached. And uh, yeah, it's got some pluses and minus. Let's go over that in detail. First, let's talk about the RoboLab. And it's merely a, a set of switches and functions, plugins and whatever that you can use to connect through your computer. Uh, the main programming language is Scratch. It's also supposed to be programmable through uh, other things, but we haven't gotten that to work yet. So, as you can see, it's got a USB power, and it comes from the computer. It's got a speaker. Uh, it's got some LEDs that you can turn on and off up here. It's got a microphone, a resistive switch. It's got some various buttons that you can program. Uh, it's got a light sensitive resistor here, and then it's got some more ports over here. The problem with the ports so far is we have not been able to find the accessories. Apparently they're not available yet or they haven't been made. So, uh, but that's the main drawback of this. Uh, you just program it in uh, Scratch from your computer and then you can use these buttons to, to control something. For example, the robot we saw earlier, you can use the, these to control that. This does not contain code. You don't download code to it or anything. It's merely a controller, like a game controller for your computer. Uh, but this one uh, is used uh, through Scratch, and it's its own variation of Scratch. It comes with its own variation of Scratch. Okay, so that's it for the Robo Lab. And the next thing is the robot. Let's look at that. The robot, first of all, it's not truly a robot. You don't download code into it, and it doesn't operate by itself. Uh, it is controlled by the USB cable. It's also supposed to have the capability of Bluetooth, but we have tried and tried and we can't get the Bluetooth to connect to it. And in fact, we notice in all the company literature, they always use the cable. So my guess is that's not functional. Probably the neatest uh, thing about this is that they have these detachable uh, different uh, sensors. Let me take them off here. We'll talk about those in a little bit. We'll just look at the basic robot. So there's the basic robot. It comes with two wheels and on the other side are just some rollers, some casters. Uh, nothing of interest back there. Um, it has five sensor ports. You can see one, two, three, four, and then back here to five. Uh, it's got the two motors. It's got a battery, a nine volt battery, but apparently that's only used for the Bluetooth, which again, we can't get to function correctly. It's got some plugs, and again, these accessories aren't available, so I'm not sure uh, what benefit that is. But it's got a, a reset, on, off, and just a, a push button for uh, whatever you want to use them for. Um, I should say this one is whatever you want to use it for. These other two are set purpose. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you just, uh, again, it's programmed in Scratch, and you can select uh, a sensor and snap it into place and then this uh, will respond to the scratch program that's being fed to it through the USB cable. Okay, let's look at the sensors and see how those work. This is the touch sensor. You can see out here you can push on this and there's a switch. You can see it pushing on a switch there and what happens is you have these magnets and they contact the robot and that's how the signal is transmitted from the sensor to the robot and these are magnetic. So each one of them works very similarly. I will show you the others. This one is merely a light. It's just an LED and you can turn it on and off and again it's got the same magnetic coupler on the back side of it. This one is a light sensor and same arrangement. This one has a measuring tape on it, but it doesn't truly measure. It just detects. You can see it's got an infrared uh, emitter and detector on that end. And so it just, uh, it will keep it from running into something, but it won't really measure any distance as far as we can tell. 
And the last one is this line following thing. There's two of them actually. And it's got an infrared emitter and detector on the bottom side of it. And with two of them on the front of the robot, you can uh, keep a white line or a black line in between the two sensors and follow it along. And we've got a video of it doing that. Okay, so that's it for the sensors. So back here is the scratch code that's going to allow the, this controller to control the robot. And we have forward, backward, left, and right, and that's from the robot's perspective, and then a brake over here. It has some other functions we're not going to use. It's also using a sensitivity control. So let's just do it. There's forward, backward, there's the brake, um, there's to the robot's left, to the robot's right, and back again, and then there's the, when it impacts something, it'll back up. So if it goes forward and hits my finger, it will back up. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the controller controlling the robot. This is the code that allows the uh, Robo Lab to control the robot. And you can see it's, uh, it's actually more complex than the code uh, for the uh, line following, but just because there is more to do. Again, these when click statements, each one of these is a separate little module, and you'll notice that each one of them is set to loop forever. So the outer part is a forever loop, and it will just come back and continue to do this. So let's start over here with this one. Uh, so when clicked, it's going to loop forever. These four if statements are going to loop forever. And the first thing he, uh, he does, this was written by someone else. The first thing he does is set the motor power at 40%. And that's just so it doesn't move too quickly. It slows it down a little bit. If lab button 2 is pressed, and that's the, that's the, uh, these are like arrow keys. So he's setting these up to be like arrow keys. So this is like the forward arrow. And what happens when the forward arrow is pressed, then the robot is set to move forward. And it turns the motors on for lab slider. The lab slider is that uh, variable resistor at the top of the, of the little console, minus 10. And that's just a, a number he found works, 10 steps. So what this lab slider is going to do throughout the routine is it's going to set the sensitivity, if you will. It's going to decide how many steps uh, for each time you push the button. And so, okay, back to this, turn the motors on for sl uh, lab slider minus 10 steps. And then the next thing is it's going to check to see if button 3 is pressed. And that is the right turn button. That's the right hand button. So on your keyboard, it would be the right arrow key. If lab button 3 is pressed, then set the robot direction to turn right. And again, the same uh, lab slider uh, uh, entry. Uh, so lab slider minus 10 steps and that will turn right for lab slider minus 10 steps. The next thing is lab button 4 is pressed and that's backwards so this would be the down arrow on your keyboard. Set the ro robot direction backward and then turn on lab slider minus 10 steps so you notice all this stepping is the same. And then the lab button 1 is pressed and that would be the left arrow on your keyboard then set the robot direction to turn left and turn the motors on for lab slider minus 10 steps. Okay, so that's those are the uh, four buttons, up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. Okay, so over here, uh, when clicked, if, they, uh, if the robot sensor, number one, so that is the front slot on the robot, and uh, he put the impact or the contact uh, sensor in the front of there, so if the sensor is greater than 20, in other words, the, the switch has been triggered, it turns the motors off, then it sets the robot direction to backward, and then it backs up for 10 steps. So this says that the robot has hit something, and now it needs to back away from it. And that's what this routine does. This next routine is if the sound sensor on the lab is, uh, is uh, greater than 25, 
then what's going to happen is it heard a loud sound like somebody yelling, oh no, or something, and it turns the motors off. So it's, it's basically a voice actuated brake, and then it waits one second, and then it'll go back to whatever it was doing. And the last thing here is it's, this is just an extra button on the console, and when you push it, it turns the motors off. So it's basically a brake. Okay, so these are the routines that were written to uh, control the robot through the uh, Robo Lab. This is the code that uh, does the line tracking with the robot. Uh, so let's just go through this briefly. This is done in Scratch. And this first thing is just a when clicked. It uh, triggers this, this uh, routine. And you notice it's forever. So it loops from the top to the bottom. And inside this loop are four if statements, four if conditions. Uh, the sensor 2 is the right-hand sensor, and sensor 5 is the left-hand sensor. It sounds backwards, but they begin in the middle of the front, and they go clockwise around it. So 1 is in the center, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, wraps all the way back around. And what this says is that if sensor 2 is bright, so the value coming back is greater than 31, and there's values over here, it will tell you what the sensors are reading uh, when it's active. Uh, when the sensor 2 is bright and when sensor 5 are bright, both of them together, uh, it moves the robot forward three steps, as you can see here, and then it turns the motor off. Uh, okay, so if those conditions aren't true, it comes down to here, and it says if sensor 2 is dark, so less than 32, and sensor 5 is dark, less than 32, then what it's going to do is it's going to move backwards a little bit. So this says that both the sensors have gone off of the white area, and so now it's going to back up and try to find that edge again. And it goes backward two steps and turns the motor off. The reason that the two and three are different is because if these are exactly the same, it will get into a condition where it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so you, you break that by having different numbers. The next statement is if, uh, if the robot sensor 2 is uh, more than, if 31 is less than uh, the robot sensor 2, so again this is the right hand sensor, then what it's going to do is it's going to turn to the right, so it's going to turn into the bright area and then uh, turn the motors off. So yeah, it's not it's not stopping, it's just turning the motor off. It, it, it makes it a little bit cleaner. If you leave the motor running, it does some strange things sometimes, so that's what this is there for. And then the next statement is uh, for sensor 5, that's the front left. And if 31 is less than uh, 5, or in other words, 5 is greater than 31, then it's going to turn to the left and then turn the motors off. And then again, it's just going to keep going through this and keep checking the condition of the robot. And this is how it follows that uh, white stripe. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your robotics experiments and scratch programming.